Hi friends, welcome back to Common the Chaos Homeschool. My name is Devin and today I'm going to be doing a term two update for our homeschool. So I am actually on the ground right now. I am surrounded by their curriculum and their material and I just thought I'd do it a little more informally today just so that I can reach what I need to reach and show you all the things I wanna show you for this video. Today I decided to combine all my kids because I felt like there wasn't enough material for each to warrant their own videos. So that's what I'm doing today. So if you are new here, I have four children and right now they're ages nine, 10, 10, and 13. Some kids are very close in age. And so I have technically, I have a third, fourth, fifth, and sixth grader. And so I'm going to be going through their material in order, but it might be a little mixed up in here as well. Hi friends, Editor Davine here. I always forget to let you know that I put a lot of work into the description box. I have chapters in there, so if you wanna jump around on the video, if there's parts of the video you want to see or you want to go back to, or there's certain grades you're not interested in and you'd like to skip ahead, please check out the description box as well as links to most of the curriculum that I'll be mentioning, I will have links. So if you're interested in taking a closer look, you can click on those links and get maybe a look inside or something like that. And just so you know, some of them are affiliate links. So that's just a way you can support my channel. If you purchase from there, Amazon will give me a small commission. So thank you if you do. And let's get into the rest of the video. So as far as life updates, there's not a whole lot Basically, this term started right after Thanksgiving and has gone to, we're not quite finished, we're almost finished, so mid-March. Christmas, we did normal school during Christmas. We didn't do less school or anything like that during Christmas. We took about three full weeks off by the time everything's said and done. And coming back into school, we've been pretty consistent. January, February, we've been getting a lot of school work done, which makes me happy. But my kids have started, I think my kids are starting to feel that they've been working really hard. So we have just recently started adding in a lot more of our extracurriculars that we do when the weather is nicer. For a while there, so January, we were sick. All of us were sick, and you can think what that means. So we weren't able to get together with our regular homeschool group for about a month. Well, we were sick, and then our friends who were in that group, who we didn't see, so we did not give it to them, they got sick right as we were able to come out and be among people again, they got sick. So we weren't able to do our normal Friday co-op with our close church and homeschool friends. So we went a while without doing much of that. And during the cold weather, our nature study walks and groups had stopped because it was just really cold and no one really got the ball rolling as far as starting a schedule for the upcoming time. So we just went on our first nature walk with that group. We meet every two weeks and we just meet at a park and we go for a walk. And this time we had about six, six moms and their kids and usually it's about three or four, so it was a good turnout for the spring. I think people are excited to get out and get into nature and do the nature walks, and then we do nature journaling after that. So that's just started up. I found out that in our nearby area, we have a skating rink that does homeschool skates every other week as well, or twice a month. So we went to one of those, and my fifth grader has started dance again. I've started my two boys in Taekwondo. My older of the two, so the one who's 10 now, he did Taekwondo right before everything shut down. So about two years ago is when he stopped doing Taekwondo. He did it about six months. And this time I signed up my nine-year-old to do Taekwondo and I wasn't sure how that would go, but it's actually gone really well. He has a hard time. He has, he's the one with autism. So he has a hard time focusing and he gets distracted and he gets, if you see something he'd rather do, it's really hard for him to focus on what he's supposed to be doing in the class. So he has actually been doing amazing, which is so nice to see like that he's able to focus on the teacher and generally follow what he's supposed to do. So that is some great improvement for him. Also, he is also able to take a class in our parent partnership program this semester. My two younger boys, they're taking a class 
on birds. So they're learning about different birds. And last semester, we tried to get him to do an art class and he lasted five minutes. He saw a projector and he couldn't get off. He, he, he just had to touch and he wasn't listening to the teacher because he just wanted to touch and know about the projector and all that. So he didn't make it through his art class last semester. So we tried it again this year or this semester and he has been doing really good in his class about birds. So that is super exciting that he is now able to do some classes. My sixth grade daughter right now, she's doing poetry journaling and she's actually the only one in her class. So her and the teacher do poetry journaling and she actually loves that. She loves hanging out with adults. And so having an adult one-on-one -on -one and just not having to wait around for anyone and just being able to do what she wants to do, that's been fun for her. And then my oldest daughter who is in sixth grade, she's been doing like a PE class. So that's really good. She, she likes to be active. And so she's been in that class this semester. So that is kind of what we've been doing. We went from kind of a very like Christmas craziness and then January, February, kind of really slow, not much happening because of sickness and friend sickness and things not happening. And now we're just like, every day it seems like we have something going on so that is our update for term two and what we're doing right now as far as activities and things outside of the home so let's get started on the curriculum let's start with my two youngest boys my boys do a lot of their work together their independent work together because they are very close closely on the same level as far as math and language arts. So some things one son will do that the other son doesn't do, but in general for our main curriculum, they work on things together. So I have my list down here. So if I'm looking down, it's because I'm checking to make sure I cover all my bases. So my boys for math, we actually haven't done teaching textbooks for a while for my two boys because they hit multiplication. And once they hit multiplication with teaching textbooks, they give you a lesson on it and then they expect you kind of to know it. And so that is not enough for my boys or my kids. So we have stopped and we are working on times tales. So we do that as a group in our morning basket. We've been working on times tales and we are getting to the end of that. And so hopefully we will be able to restart teaching textbooks and they will have some of those multiplication facts that they need or at least strategies to be able to figure it out other than counting or just writing everything down. So hopefully it'll work. We should be starting our teaching textbooks again maybe next week. So we're gonna see how that goes. I am planning on doing a review on Times Tales just to let you know about the whole program. So stick around if that's something you're interested in seeing. I have been getting responses from my audience and it sounds like you like a lot of curriculum reviews and flip throughs. So I'm going to be going through all my material that I have not done any flip throughs or reviews on and just trying to get out as many as I can to you. So thank you for letting me know what you're interested in and I'm gonna be working on making videos for you in regards to that. So teaching textbooks, we should get started again and they will enjoy that once we do. We have been mostly working on, so we've been working on Times Tales and because we haven't been doing teaching textbooks, we've been doing more of the math mammoth. And so we, we just finished up, we're almost done math mammoth level two. So that's for my third and fourth grader and math mammoth is a harder curriculum. So I would say level two is probably on par with most grade three curriculums. I'm happy with that. We are finishing that and we'll be starting our next level, level three, just as a supplement once we start our teaching textbooks up again. So my boys are both doing explode the code. So, I mean, I just have a picture here, nothing too exciting. So one of my boys is on explode the code six. The other one is on four and a half. So my son who, my younger son, he is actually really great with phonics and spelling. He is one of those, he just learned to read pretty naturally. So he just does the, the ones without the half. So he's on level six. And then my other son, he struggles a little bit more. He has speech, he does speech in the school. So phonics and spelling don't come as naturally to him. So we've been doing all the half. So he's at four and a half. I think he's almost done that. So he should be going to five soon. And he's also the one who is working on spelling UCB. We are on book two now. We started this late in the year and we did one lesson and a half every time we did it for book one. And now we're at book two and we are slowing down to about 
well, we're just doing about two, I think we're doing four lessons a week. So we're going the speed that we would go if we were doing it normally. We don't do five days a week of school and actually we do do five days a week of school. I never ever assign more than four days a week of any curriculum. So we are working on this four days a week, just a two page spread and so far so good. I still like Spelling UC and if you haven't seen my flip through and review of Spelling UC Level B, I will just link that here above and you can watch that. So that's working well for us still. And both of my boys are still working on their language lessons for a living education level three. And I talked a little bit more about that in my term one update and I'll link that here as well. So if you wanna see our term one update and what I talked about about these curriculum there, you can go ahead and look at that after this video. But so language lessons for a living education, it is one of those things that I, I won't say that I love it and I definitely don't hate it. It does the job for what we need it to do. It is a comprehensive all-in-one curriculum. However, I do feel like I do need to supplement with things which I actually like. I like to have one curriculum that covers just the basics and then supplement where it's needed for the other things. So it does the trick for that. We aren't going to be using this next year and it's just because it is not my favorite and I'm always looking for something that might be my favorite. So we have done this for two years though. So it was it was good enough. The level two was good enough for me to say, well, there's nothing else I see that I wanna try more. So let's go ahead and do level three. And I think my boys are enjoying it just fine. Like it's going fine this year. They might like it more just because they're used to the structure of it. So we're working on that. And handwriting, I don't have a sample for you, but we use the good and the beautiful handwriting and we only do two or three pages a week. So we're just moving along in that they're both working on level three, which is the introduction to cursive. So that's going fine. And I just wanted to show you the readers that they're doing right now. My older son, he's right now reading The Last Little Cat. So the books that I have for him so I went and I picked out books that my boys could read along with what we're going to be doing soon. So right now we're in, we do Sunlight B and C condensed as our history, Bible and literature. And so that normally you would do leveled readers with that, but we're going to be moving into D and E book shark. So I'll talk more about that later in another in my curriculum reveal or whatever, but my boys are not quite at the D level reading. So the readers are going to be too hard for my boys. They're still more in a third grade level. And I feel like the D readers have a combination of third, fourth, and maybe even fifth if you get the advanced reader, fifth grade readers. So I actually have gone through and I have picked out the ones in D that they can read and I've supplemented things with a little bit easier readers. So I'm actually planning on doing a, what my boys are going to be reading with level D and E of Bookshark, which is very similar to Sunlight. So very similar programs if you're, if you're not aware of that. So I'm gonna be doing a video on that and I hope that's something that interests you. So anyways, my older son is reading this one right now, The Last Little Cat, and he likes it. And my younger son right now is reading Marco Polo. And this is actually one of the level four readers that my girls did last year, but we're learning about exploration and things like that. So my younger son, he's working on this. So this is a great reader for like a grade three level and great history. I love, I love this book. I didn't know much about Marco Polo at all. And I've now had to listen to my kids read it about four times. He's the fourth one to go through this and I'm still learning. So I really enjoy this book. So it's a really good book if you want, if you're doing early exploration and you want your child to be reading a story at their level at like around the grade three reading level. So those are the readers that they're working on right now. And that's pretty much what my boys are doing. So I'm gonna move on to my fifth grader and her pile is quite large. So let me get to her page here so I don't miss anything. So my fifth grader, she is working on 
Teaching Textbook 6, and she does not actually use this workbook, but it's just a reminder and a visual for me. So Teaching Textbook 6, and that is working fine for her. No issues there. She is also doing Beast Academy, and I got her level 4 books, but Beast Academy is quite a different kind of math program, and that is one I'm going to be doing a review and flip through of, but it is very challenging and it is very logic based. And so some kids who have that really logical brains and really like to figure out puzzles and things like that, that would probably be a great math program for them. And I know people like parents who have the math degrees and stuff, they really like Beast Academy. My daughter does not love it, and I thought she would like it because I don't know, I thought I'd give her a challenge, but I also knew that it runs a bit high. So I, even though she's working on teaching textbooks math six, I got her Beast Academy four, and that was too hard. We were doing mostly the online version and she'd be calling me in all the time and I'd be trying to figure out these logic puzzles. And I find it pretty exciting, but it also gets a little frustrating when you don't exactly know how to do it. So we actually moved to, online you can move to any level. So we moved to the level three and that has been challenging enough, but also giving her some kind of different math and learning things. So we are doing Beast Academy level three now instead of the level four and it's working better. We are gonna finish off the year but I'm definitely not going to sign her up for it again. So we're just gonna get as far as we get and then we'll be done at the end of this year for Beast Academy. I also supplement with Math Mammoth, not so much right now because she's doing Beast Academy. So we're just doing teaching textbooks and I would say supplementing with Beast Academy. So that's what we're doing for math. So writing, we are still working on IEW writing. Uh, we are on lesson, I believe lesson nine or week nine. We got this late in the year and I didn't plan on finishing it this year anyway. So we are actually gonna get halfway through, which is about week 12 and they have about 24 lessons. So we will finish up to lesson 12 in here and then we will continue this next year. My kids find the videos a bit long. I think they're just not used to the longer classroom setting where you have to sit and listen to the teacher, talk to the other students and read other people's papers and things like that. I think it's good practice for them and kind of reminds them what it was like maybe in public school. So they don't love the videos, but they're okay. And I really like the program and I'm usually in the same room kind of teaching my boys so I can watch and hear what he's teaching and where they're at. So I, I kind of know what they're learning so that when they're writing their papers, I know what to expect. Oh, so I'm saying there because my fifth grader and my sixth grader are doing this together. So they're doing year one level A together. So that's been going well. My fifth grader is already a pretty good writer, so she doesn't really need it too much. She just, it's just structure and teaching how to research and things like that. So that's good for her. But my sixth grader really does need the help with the writing. And so that has been really good. It's been challenging, but not too challenging. I do have to cut out some pieces, but definitely she's growing as a writer. So I'm very, very happy with the IEW's structure and style. That's been working well for us. And along with that, we are working on, so we have Fix It Grammar, book one, The Nose Tree. Both my girls are doing this and we are definitely further in this. We are at week, we just finished week 22. So we will finish this this year with both of the girls and it's been good. I'm not going to do it next year, um, but I'm gonna talk about that more, I guess, in my curriculum video and I'll talk about why. So you'll wanna watch my curriculum pics when that comes up. So, but we are enjoying Fix It Grammar. I do recommend it. All right, so this daughter does not need spelling and she does not need phonics and she doesn't really need vocabulary, but I figured she could learn some more vocabulary. It's always good to be able to grow in your vocabulary. So I got her two vocabulary books. She's working on Word Roots Beginning. And even though this says grade three and four, it has been challenging enough for her. There are enough things. I would definitely start with this book. If your child has not done root words, I would start with this book. We have level one, which is the next level. And it's okay. It's a workbook. It's going fine. 
I think she's learning some roots. It's not the most exciting thing in the world, but she doesn't hate it either. So we're gonna keep on working on that. We have level one already, so we'll just continue with that when we get there. We're almost done this book. And I got doodle definitions. And this is kind of fun. You draw pictures to go with words to help you remember the meanings. So she's still working on that and we might finish that this year or we will be close to done when we get to the end of the year. We're pretty on pace for that. Okay, um, both of my girls were doing story elements. This is my older girl. She was actually doing this level and then my fifth grader was doing the five and six level. I would not pick this up again. I didn't love it. We're moving into written narration. So what my girls do for written narration is they have, oh, I grabbed the wrong book. They just have a little binder like this. It says Chinese, but our written narration book, she just writes literature, written narration. And once or twice a week, I have her write a page kind of summarizing what she read in her reader for that day. So that's what we're doing instead of like something like story elements. So she's been working on that. And handwriting, I think she's doing level five in handwriting for the good and the beautiful. That's going great. And I have both of my girls right now are doing this art from Artistic Pursuits, elementary grade four and five. They're both doing this. My older daughter just started for this semester and my fifth grader is finishing up on this and she's going to jump into the middle school art Artistic Pursuits shortly. So they're doing that. Both of my daughters are doing the Big Life Journal for kids and they really like that. It's growth mindset sort of stuff and that is going well. And my fifth grader is the one that always needs a little more to do because she's always running out of things to do because she just finishes everything super quickly. So she started typing up recipes for a dessert cookbook. She loves to bake. And so she's been practicing her typing by typing up some of her favorite recipes that she cooks and putting it here in this cookbook. And then the other thing I got her started on, I recommended that she did, oh, sorry, Ugh, legs falling asleep. The other thing I recommended that she did was do a personal interest project or research. And so I just said, hey, why don't you pick something you're really interested in and do some notebooking pages or create a book about that topic. And she was really excited about that. And so I said, okay, what topic do you wanna do? And she chose leopard geckos. We have a leopard gecko. We love our leopard gecko. His name is Monty and he's really cute and we really like him a lot. And so she is really into leopard geckos. So she is creating, She's doing, uh, just creating a book about leopard geckos. She's researching, she's writing her research out and she's gonna add pictures. And so this is kind of her, if you have extra time in the school day, work on your personal project. So that is what she is working on right now. And I think that pretty much covers my fifth grader. We've actually been also reading, she's been reading these Nature Liberty, Christian Liberty Nature Readers. And these have been really fun. Both of my daughters have enjoyed them. We started on book three and then my fifth grader just finished the book four and she liked it so much she didn't want to do. We usually do 20 minutes of her reader and then 10 minutes of 10 minutes, usually 10 minutes of the reader at night. So 20 minutes in the afternoon, 10 minutes at night. And she asked if she could keep reading this for 10 minutes every night instead of her reader. So I got her the next book book five so she's reading that every night and there's some comprehension questions that she just answers to us every night so she's really been enjoying these christian liberty nature readers so that's kind of cool so that is my fifth grader so my sixth grader let me find those pages all right so my fifth grader she is not doing teaching textbooks she did not like it at all and so I think I mentioned in my last one that we have switched to the good and the beautiful math four and this has been so great I really like I've done a review on it I'll link that here since the review I'm still more and more impressed it is so sequential in that it teaches little tiny steps and then gives them practice at those little tiny steps before they build on to the next concept. 
I am so happy with this program. I'm so glad they have a level five. We will finish this, I believe, at least by around the summertime, and we'll be able to start level five next year and because there's 120 lessons so even though we started like 10 weeks 11 weeks into the school year we're going to be able to finish this we do four lessons a week and we're going to be able to finish it so i'm super happy with this she's learning so much she now knows like square roots and she's starting to divide and she's starting to do the long division and just very gentle steps to get her to that point so i'm super happy with the good and the beautiful math four it is working amazing for us and she does a little bit of math mammoth, just supplemental math mammoth. So we do that. What I didn't mention is all my kids are doing time for math facts. Even my youngest who couldn't handle it at the beginning of the year, he is now doing time for math facts. And my third, fourth and sixth grader are still doing the adding and subtracting because they're still working on getting those skills up. And my fifth grader has finished. She did the multiplication and division, finished that. And then she went back to do the addition and subtraction and she finished that. So she's done with Time for Math Facts. So I have three kids who are still working on Time for Math Facts. It's just a fun way to get those math facts faster and like kind of in a game sort of way. So that's been working great for my kids. I might continue that next year because they're still only on the addition and subtraction. And I'd love for them to get the multiplication and division facts fast as well. So like I mentioned, she's doing IEW with my fifth grader and that's going great. We're doing Fix It Grammar together, the first book, and that is going great. She has, oh, I don't, yes, I do. All right, she's working on Easy Grammar. I just wanted her to do some more grammar. I really like Easy Grammar. It's also very incremental, teaching small steps at a time. She doesn't love it, but I think it's really good and we're gonna continue to work on that. We're not gonna finish this this year. We're just gonna keep on working on this. We don't do it every day. So we're gonna keep working on this next year. And this phonics book, I showed you this last time and I said I didn't love it and I don't. I still don't love it. So it came to the point where I just decided, you know what, we have other things to do with our school time. This will just be an extra workbook if we need Sometimes my kids earn more tablet time or earn things by doing a little extra work. And so we kind of have an extra work pile. And so this is going in the extra work pile. If you want to earn more tablet time, you can do a little bit from this phonics book. But yeah, we're done. We're done with this phonics book for school. Handwriting, she's on level three. So getting into the cursive writing as well. And that, oh, and then she does spelling you see. So we just started our Spelling You See Level D book two and it's going fine. I really do like Spelling You See and I feel like it has really worked for her and for my youngest son. However, I feel like it might even be getting too hard for her so I'm slowing it down a little bit. We were doing four lessons a week and I think I'm going to slow it down to three lessons a week because I really want her to know how to spell pretty much all the words by the time we're done the lesson and that is not happening right now. So still happy with the spelling you see. I know a spelling list would not work for her at all. So this is the best I've been able to find for her. So we just we're just going to slow it down and not be in a rush to finish any of these levels. So there you go. There is all the curriculum for all my kids for their independent studies. I hope that was helpful for you. If you want to see a more in-depth flip through or review of any of these curriculum, please do leave it in the comments below. Like I said, I will be making more of these for you since that is what you seem to want. So just let me know if there are any ones you really want to see so I can make them for you. And thank you so much for coming today. I hope to see you in the next video. Goodbye, everyone.